Uh, Phil will be here shortly. We'll add him into the uh, panel as soon as he gets here. But uh, I'd like to welcome all the IFBB pros that are here today competing at the Tech Pro. Rock Pro. Um, got all kinds of names. Big names. Uh, I'd like to welcome the press, of course, uh, for all being here today covering this event. Obviously, uh, the fans worldwide will be seeing this on the internet as we uh, proceed through the weekend. Um, we've got some uh, really some great lineups here. Um, Next to the Olympia is probably the best lineup that we've had, uh, especially if the events open uh, for the entire year. So, congratulations on that. We expect a great show. In the world now for the past couple of years, literally, if you have event after event, uh, pretty much crisscrossing all over the globe, you've got China, you've got Russia coming up, uh, back to the States, uh, obviously here for the third year in a row, I believe. Um, Lee, now, we mentioned at the beginning of the uh, press conference, this lineup, probably second to the Olympia, probably the best lineup I can think of all year long. How does this lineup stack up with the entire year of events for the IFBB? Well, first of all, Robert, thank you for having me back. Uh, and Martin, um, since day one, coming to Prague, it's just been a wonderful experience. And uh, I feel like uh, I have a second home here in Prague and a family in Robert and Martin and Peter and the entire Prague team. Thank you so much. Um, Gentlemen, yes, and ladies, uh, this open this open class is the best lineup we've had since the Olympia, and the second best we've had all year. Uh, we've seen since the Olympia the battles happen, uh, different winners. Uh, so the, the fight the fight is on. I mean, uh, the, we come here to uh, to Prague, and uh, I know for the European fans this is going to be extremely uh, fun. Uh, for the guys and uh, the ladies, this is going to be work. Uh, because this is a tremendous lineup, and so we're going to make sure that the comparisons are there. And uh, I think you're going to see a, a tremendous shootout. We have two returning champions, and Kai Green and Dennis Wolf, uh, both from the show. And, and so, you know, year three, uh, it's going to be a shootout. You have uh, Dexter Jackson uh, coming off of uh, Dubai here. Uh, Victor Martinez joins the group. Uh, it's a tremendous, uh, tremendous lineup, and, and the remaining. Uh, gentleman that uh, showed up here to Brock, so Robert to, to his team, and uh, I say Ty for coming out here in June uh, to really be the ambassador for, for the sport and for this contest. I, I think it's, it's helped tremendously. I had the honor of, of watching him work uh, with the European fans, and it uh, was a tremendous job, and, and on behalf of myself and the IBB, I'd like to say thank you, Ty, for, for coming out here and, and really building this show, and to hear that the ticket sales are up tremendously, I think is not only the hard work of of Robert and his team, but uh, I think we want you to die and we're, we're appreciative. I'm appreciative. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> Folks, uh, for those who don't know or recognize him, this is Robin Chang. He is the producer of the Olympia competitions for the past 10 years or so. I uh, had the good fortune of working with Robin in uh, all 10 of those years, and this last year, the 50th. Um, I think a lot of people agree that it was probably the greatest Olympia. Uh, that we've had. I think uh, Joe would be proud of, of course, if he was here today uh, to see the changes and, and uh, the enormity of the Olympia weekend. Uh, you know, this show was up 400%. As Robert said, the Olympia was up, I don't know how much percent, but I tell you what, everything was sold out. Everything was busy. Uh, so congratulations to Robin. I just want to give you a chance. Uh, put a big hand for Robin. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out again this year. Um, once again, I'd like to thank Robert and his team for putting on an amazing show. Each year, getting bigger, better, with uh, more attendance. So, um, on behalf of Jim Mannion and IBG Pro League, we'd like to thank you guys, and we'll continue to support you guys. You guys put on an awesome show. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Robert. Got something? Uh, I was speaking to you. No, We have a special guest of here still, but we have a special guest from uh, from our Spain. It's our ambassador of the which is a founder of our special merchandise. So uh, we have a second line of. Uh, Special mention that so we will see on the, the show or on the uh, some special cartoon. Um, thank you. Uh, and uh, I'd 
I forgot to pronounce all this. All right, thank you, Robert. Speaking of Kai Green, uh, Kai, I understand that uh, you have a brand new title, Mr. Ambassador, we shall uh, forever refer you as. Uh, but for those who don't know, Kai has been named the ambassador to the Amateur Olympia. He's been very instrumental in bringing uh, more awareness uh, and bringing the competitions up uh, to where they are now. So, uh, Kai, you're the defending champ here, I understand. Um, so, uh, we thought you were here as an ambassador role, but I, I'm looking down the list and I see the name of Kai Green. So, I'm taking that as you will be competing tomorrow, my friend.
Uh, that was definitely one of the coolest things that I was able to be a part of as a professional bodybuilder because I do know that as a Mr. Olympia champion, your hope and dream is to have your sport, which it is a sport, actually be featured on a major network in the U.S. So we're making great strides, and I'm very excited to be a part of that. And uh, you know, really pumped to actually watch these guys uh, get after this week. Well, Phil, uh, just before you got here, Kai said that uh, the reason that you weren't competing here uh, was because that you were scared of him and you didn't want. He didn't say that. <laughs> Still knows my uh, stuff by now. Um, but uh, yeah, we're just making up stuff now. But, um, <laughs> but the bottom line, Phil, is a lot of people wanted to know uh, why you opted not to compete on any of the circuit shows after the Olympia. Uh, you know, I was able to do it last year. You know, I did the Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic Europe. And shortly thereafter, I just realized, gosh, I just need my body to have a rest. And, uh, you know, it takes a lot out of me to to go against, you know, all these guys. I mean, these guys are incredible. And, uh, you know, I also felt that, you know, winning Olympia is one thing, but to be on the road and to compete, I truly didn't feel that I was giving my best to the fans. Obviously, you know, a lot of fans want to see me on the stage, and I, and I totally understand that. And, and who knows, maybe next year I do the circuit all over again. But I felt at the time, my likeness would be greater utilized by meeting and greeting fans while these guys are actually going to stay. Um, you can spend more time with me, get to know me, get to, get to ask more questions when I'm not, you know, face first in chicken breast and broccoli, when I'm, when I'm not depleted. Um, I definitely feel that when I'm at Expos, you know, I, I tend to have a more um, exciting, you know, moment when I'm not competing. This, is, like I said, doesn't mean that I haven't thought about it. Uh, this is actually one of the shows that I've actually had on my list. Um, but just for this year, it just didn't happen to be. Uh, so who knows? Um, I've never been to this show, so depending on how it all works out, uh, who knows in 2015. All right, thank you, Phil Heaton, everybody. In there as well. Uh, but I want to focus on this competition uh, here this weekend. Uh, Kai Green, the last minute entrant into the show. I don't think a lot of people saw that one coming, at least of all yourself. How do you feel about Kai entering the show at the last minute? It's a show, so everybody says it's great, everyone wants to win. I don't care who's going to be. For me, I mean, I'm doing my job, doing my million sheet page, and uh, she will be able to, uh, you know, I'm the shape or not, she's the rest of my life. That's it. So you leave it in the judges' hands. Well, no, we are not going to you see what I mean? <laughs> there is, if I don't shave, I cannot, you know, uh, you know, be judging. You know, to judge body going is not just one thing. To be in shape and competing on stage is another thing. So, uh, you know, it's hard to judge. Oh, I don't want to be a judge. I'm going to get And uh, I feel great. Uh, I think I can uh, beat anyone. But just need to be on time and point. I guess uh, that's, uh, I think, Everyone uh, like this. Everybody can beat another guy, and uh, like we saw in Dubai, we saw uh, the last couple of years. You know, it's all possible. Thank you, Dennis. Yes. All right. Speaking of winners, Dexter Jackson, winner in Dubai just last week. Congratulations, Dex. In fact, I was looking over some numbers. We were talking the other day. I was asking you if the amount of wins, victories that you had in your career um, is the most of all time. Uh, I actually did look it up. I believe Ronnie still has 26. I think you're right behind at 20 or 21. 20, 20. 20, 21 with this show, right? 20 right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to look that far ahead. No, well, it's only 24 hours away, so uh, it's not too far ahead. Uh, but that's congratulations on that. I mean, obviously, if anybody has got a chance to break the streak, um, it's certainly going to be yourself, because obviously you're showing no signs of slowing down. A lot of people thinking you're better now at 45 than you were uh, the last two, three, or four years. So uh, still up there in the mix uh, with the Olympians on the Olympia stage, um, and still in the mix here for a title. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Yeah, a few words, I should say. <laughs> Next, give me your feelings here. I mean, uh, like I said, we happened to be talking about it just yesterday. 45 years old, I mean, uh, we were on the Olympia stage here. 
you were having a good time on the stage uh, in the pose down and, and having it up with the guys. Uh, and as you walked off, you turned to me and you said, hey, 45 years old and still cashing checks. Yeah, man. You know, that's what it's all about. You know, it's all about having fun. You know, I've been doing this a long time. And, um, you know, who, do, who don't like to, um, don't like what they do, enjoy what they do, and, um, and be happy with what they're doing? You know, if I, didn't, if I hated the sport and just do it just for the, for the hell of it, then I would be re retired a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? So it's something I love to do. It's a job to me. You know, we earn good money. You know what I'm saying? So we're making a living thanks to the IPB. And, um, you know, so, you know, it, it's, it's, it's been a long time coming. Um, I've been competing now for about 20, 25 years, 16 years as a pro. And um, how I keep going, I, I don't know. <laughs> It's just, I'm just best with great genetics, you know? Um, but, um, and I take care of myself, of course. So taking care of yourself and, and, you know, especially when it comes to injuries and stuff like that, I've never been injured in my life. You know what I'm saying? I train smart, you know, and um, a lot of people these days like to get away from doing machine work and that type of stuff. You know, I believe in it heavily, and I've proven to everybody that you can do a lot of machine work and still come in better than you've ever been. In fact, at the seminar, we did the uh, Sunday seminar after the Olympia. Um, your answer as to why you keep going was, was pretty simple. You said, give me another job where I can make the money that I'm making, training an hour a day, uh, you know, living the life of a, of, a, of a pro bodybuilder. You said, if you can show me a job, I'll take it, but until then, I'll keep going. Exactly. You know, I, I get people all the time say, what well, you want a master, you want Olympia, you want Arnold's, you want everything. You know, why are you still competing? What do you got to prove? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I go to the gym an hour a day. Um, you know, maybe an hour and a half tops, five days a week, make a lot of money. So if you can find me a job where I can go to work for an hour a day and make this kind of money, I, I'll retire. But until then, and I'm still doing well, there's no way I'm retiring right now. Thank you, Dexter Jackson, everybody. All right, continuing now with the champs, Flex Lewis, three-time 12 champ, your current reigning Olympia champ, Flex. Um, congratulations, first of all, on your Olympia victory, your third. Um, but this was not the easiest victory for you, actually. It was probably the hardest victory uh, as you were battling your own body uh, pretty much for the entirety of the weekend. So uh, while not feeling your best, you certainly still uh, look the best, at least in the judges' eyes, and that was enough for the victory, but that was a tough one. First things foremost, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out today. Um, I'm coming back to Prague as the defending champion. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm honored again. I, I did up my word on stage last year. And I said I would be back. So, um, in terms of your question, uh, yeah, I had a, a great prep. And uh, just one of the things came into Vegas. I uh, must spend the wrong room, but you know, like uh, within every little. Uh, a little bump in the road, you know, when you get to the top of the mountain and you look down, it's a great view. So when I had that medal around me, uh, that meant that much more, especially after it was history to make in the 50th year of Joe Year to still look here. So that, that would be my point. And uh, you talked about how tough this was, and you didn't actually know if you were going to make it on stage initially. I mean, you actually thought, I might have to pull out of this show. No, that's you still in the pocket. <laughs> but, no, there was, there was that question in my mind. Uh, uh, I think uh, I see people walking actually walk something. I see him just probably walking on stage. And, um, I just had to put it away, you know. I'm a professional athlete. I pride myself on being at that pro, giving back to the fans, and, and it was not a question I was going to ever pull out the shorts. I sucked it up, put it all into my routine, and then uh, again, when I got off, off stage, I got to go around my team, and uh, we made a plan, plan of action, and I came back at that night show. So um, I just also like to add that this is the best, as you mentioned earlier, open class since the end of um, And I, as a, as a champion, and I, as a fan, very, very much so looking forward to seeing the back up on stages tomorrow. So again, with the 212s, so all the guys that have done the scene, and there's going to be a, just a bigger back in the 212 class, guys. So um, 
So I'm very excited for this whole weekend. And we talk about how tough the lineup for the two club is these days. Uh, David Henry, who was a former champ, uh, back then I believe it was either the 202 or the 210 that he won. Um, and, and best in the world. Showed up at the Olympia this year, looked good, but didn't make the top six. And that's a great thing about the 212. You know, if somebody's off, if somebody else is off, so we all got to bring our own game, and you know it's, it's all about condition, and that's what the 212 guys bring. So um, I know that uh, there's a lot of guys that have done the circuit, and there's a lot of new blood that are coming into the game, so that's the exciting thing. You know, you don't know who's going to turn up, but I know what I'm bringing tomorrow, and that's the, the same guy that I, that I left at the Olympia. And the Olympia. All right. Thank you, Flex. Slew is your three-time Olympia champion. Victor Martinez, the Dominican dominator. Vic, we talked about the uh, veterans of the game. That's obviously going to be 25 years. You're not too far behind that. Uh, you've been on the circuit for some time. You've had your ups. You've certainly had your downs. But you've rebounded back from every single one of them, and you're still in the mix. Uh, a lot of people saying that this year you finally kind of get back to where you were before, close to 100 percent. Congratulations, Bill. Well, thank you, Bill. Um, uh, first, I like to say, uh, you know, thank you, uh, LBS, uh, for you know having me here prior to this show. And uh, wow, in order to continue, you got to look into. Uh, Someone that you know, you know, follow a good lead, and Dexter is definitely one of them. You know, Tony Freeman. I was telling him that the other day. Uh, like seeing him compete is, is motivating, keeps you going, and uh, just coming back. You know, with those little setbacks I had, um, I'm good enough to be coming back. So here I am, and uh, look forward to this weekend. The new fans over here in Prague can't wait to meet them, and it's going to be a good show. Now, Vic, you also look like you were having some fun on the Olympia stage, and uh, you know, I've obviously seen you guys for some years now competing. Um, but it seemed like some of the veterans this year, uh, Dexter included, uh, definitely yourself in that mix, seemed to be uh, taking a little bit more time to enjoy the surroundings, uh, experience the Olympia weekend, of course, show me your 50th being celebrated this year. So it was something a little bit special in the area. Did it feel special on stage? Um, I won, of course. <laughs> but, uh, it felt good, again, 50th anniversary, being there, and especially uh, being on NBC. I mean, it, it kind of brought on a whole new feeling because, yes, you know, you get streamlined, yes, uh, by one.com shows it through the internet, but now that just brought a whole different feel. I mean, now you're going out and you're bringing it to people's homes, millions, and uh, that in of itself uh, gave a whole new different feel just being on that stage. and. And I was glad to be part of it, the 50th anniversary, and I would have totally hate myself if I had not been there. And uh, thank God I was, and uh, yeah, look forward to the next big one. All right, thank you, Victor Martinez. Mr. Kumbo, King Snake. Steve, welcome to Prague. Uh, thank you. It's one of the, we talked about the veterans that have been around for 20, 25 years. You're obviously one of the newer guys on the circuit, but found yourself on the Olympia stage for the second time in your short career. Um, this time going a little bit better for you last year. I know we talked before the show, you said your goal was to make it into the top 10, and you did it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be on Olympia stage, and uh, you know, reaching a goal of top 10 is, is the start to where I want to ultimately end up, and that's, you know, to be on top one day. Uh, new stage here, new day tomorrow, and you know, we'll see what uh, what everybody's bringing. Well, you had a very good showing. Uh, was it just last week or the week before? Uh, the Dubai? Dubai. Dubai. Yeah. So just last week. A few days ago, pretty much. Um, now, you're in kind of uncharted territory, Steve, because obviously uh, you've only been on the pro circuit for a few years now. Um, how is it combining traveling now with uh, competing and, and having to pack, you know, a week's worth of clothes and food and trying to get food on the plane? How's that working? I think the biggest obstacle we face is, uh, is food and, and the prep that goes in it because everything is so specific with us and it just takes a lot of preparation and I, I believe you know all these guys are prepared and all these guys are putting into the time and, and effort and uh, you know nobody wants to miss anything and you know having an accommodating the hotel and, and, and venue which we have here in Prague is, is great and there's food for us and it makes it a lot easier for the competitors traveling and uh, so I mean I, I uh, doing the circuit that we're doing it's 
it, it just takes a lot of preparation. And I mean, you got to have a whole suitcase dedicated to food, a whole suitcase dedicated to clothes, and you know, obviously we bring our merchandise and stuff to sell as well. So um, it's exciting, and I'm, I'm honored to be part of it. Thank you, Steve Kupo. All right, Flexitron is in the house. Sean Rogan, Sean, congratulations on your Olympia showing once again. Um, after prejudging, a lot of the talk on the boards and everything else and the fan base that was around on Olympia weekend saying, uh, with all due respect to, to Phil and Kai, that you were actually in the best condition on Friday. Your thoughts after the prejudging Friday night at the Olympia? Well, first and foremost, I'd like to um, thank you guys for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be back here. As far as the 50th anniversary of Joey Olympia, uh, just kind of play my own race and you know, see what happens. Uh, I don't pay much attention to what the fans say. Uh, this is my coach. They just go from there. I know I was in great condition, so I wasn't too worried about anything else. Yeah, you were in great condition. And like I say, I know you don't pay attention a lot to the, you know, the boards and, and all the fan base out there, but uh, you were getting some, some pretty good thumbs up. Um, your thoughts now? I mean, obviously, we're post Olympia now. You've been on the circuit now. Uh, you basically said you're going to do every show. Uh, I know last year you hit quite a bunch, and um, it doesn't look like you're slowing down this year. So, uh, how's your prep going with all the travel and competing? And it's been uh, very exciting to see you. Being a fan of bodybuilding, back in the day, we had the opportunity of seeing something like this a few months later. I opened the magazine to see what Ryan did, what Flex did, and all these guys. So, to be part of it now, the experience and it's, it's, it's a great feel. Um, I think the hardest part is just the preparation. Um, Having done it before, it's, it's a little bit easier. Um, I know the ones needed and what's not to go back. Um, but I'm, I'm going to have some fun. Um, I'm going to enjoy the journey and uh, see what happens. All right. Thank you, Sean Roman. Thank you, Sean Roman. Jose Raymond thought he was going to be in the back of Obscure and not get in question, but Jose, you've been pretty vocal out there as uh, definitely one of the first guys championing the uh, 212. You've been there literally since day one. Um, you've competed in your, certainly your fair share of shows in Olympias, and you've been on the circuit. You talk about your veterans in the Open. You're certainly a veteran uh, of many years. Uh, you actually stayed as an amateur for years past the uh, time that you couldn't turn pro. And now when the, uh, the 210 actually made a state use of years ago, this gave you a new life. You said this basically gave me a reason to turn pro. Uh, your thoughts on the 212 class and how it's progressed? Well, thanks, bro. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, just hold it close. Yeah, this, is, uh, this division has given me, myself, and uh, many other athletes a chance to shine. Where um, most people wouldn't even know my name if it wasn't for this class. So um, yeah, I was tiny when I first was able to turn pro at 150 pounds. I would look kind of funny standing next to Jay, Jay Cutler, you know? <laughs> so I decided against it and, and wanted to grow. And, and uh, I think, I like to think that people like me that were not competing is what spurred on that division. Because we were losing a lot of quality uh, bodybuilders that, that just didn't have a place to compete realistically um, so I feel very blessed that, that this class came about and uh, I've scratched and clawed my way up the ranks and uh, now I'm right there breathing down Flex's neck <laughs> well that you are uh, but you've also given props where they're due um, I just saw a recent uh, interview that you did you basically says I don't know how I can do to beat this guy I mean I've kind of thrown everything at him he's uh, He's got great genetics, and he's a, he's a great champion. He, you know, he certainly puts his work in. Um, what do you got to do to take out the champ? Well, I think it's, it's like anything. You've you got to keep coming and keep showing up, keep bringing your best. And nobody is perfect 100% of the time. And, and you just keep coming and hope that uh, that 1% of the time happens eventually when I'm on. So, uh, yeah, Flex is, is, is the best. He's one of a kind, you know, even when he's not at his best, he's better than everyone else. So you, you gotta hope that he makes a mistake and I bring something that, uh, you know, that, that warrants beating him. You know? Until then, 
Kudos to you, brother. <laughs> and Jose, uh, let's be clear. You're not trying to play Flash's game, so to say. You're not trying to tailor your physique to, you know, be uh, closer to his streamline. No, you said right off the bat, look, I am what I am. Um, I'm not going to be the pretty guy out there. I'm not going to be the most I'm just going to be Jose Raymond, the best Jose Raymond I can be. You're bringing gnarly, nasty muscle. That's it, and I think uh, a lot of people should should play that game. Every time I've tried to match up against Flex, it turned out really ugly. And, uh, <laughs> and I was just short, blocky, and flat. So I'd rather be short, blocky, and a monster <laughs> than, than that. So uh, yeah, you know, if you're a slender guy, play that game. If you're a, a big guy, you know, you play to your own strengths. And, and you'll, you'll end up better, and that's what I'm doing. All right, Jose Raymond, everybody. <laughs> Biggie Smalls, Fred Biggie Smalls. Fred, we talked about uh, Head Judge Lee Thompson, talked about keeping the bodybuilding entertaining for giving something back to the fans. Uh, you're one of the guys who've been uh, basically holding the torch for the entertainment crew, and, and we've seen some good ones over the years on the Olympia stage, anybody from Melvin Anthony, uh, Dexter, or not, I'm sorry, not Dexter, not that you're not entertaining. Uh, the Durham Charles. Thanks to night dancing uh, nowhere. Uh, but Freddie, you've been obviously been getting a lot of recognition lately for your routines. Uh, very entertaining. The crowd loves them. Uh, you got uh, you know a, a great ovation at the Olympia. Um, how important is entertainment when it comes to the bodybuilding? Um, hello. I want to thank uh, Jose for having me back. It was an uh, unbelievable experience here last year. Uh, the crowd was amazing. And um, you know these fans pay a lot of money, a lot of their hard-earned money to see us work, to work on stage. And uh, I just like to bring something different, something they can jump up about, something to smile about. And uh, you know, in the meantime, I keep improving my physique. And but right now, this is my car to carry. Um, I carry it proudly. And, um, one day I, do, I will be in that top six, but uh, right now this is what I'm doing, and I'm having fun doing it, and um, I love being on stage with all these great athletes. Um, I miss the Dubai show, I was missing all these guys, so I'm happy to be back in the mix, and uh, I hope the fans love what I do tomorrow night. You teach Dexter how to do any of those moves you got? I don't keep my tire loose to myself. You can't teach your old dog any <laughs> <and> tricks. <laughs> Freddie Smalls, everybody. There's William in the back. I got the sun behind it. William, congratulations on all your success this year, finally getting to the Olympia stage. Uh, I know it was your goal to make the top 10. Um, just out on the outside looking in, but I know you got a very good experience. Your thoughts on uh, making your first Olympia? Uh, it was a great experience. It's a big support well, you have any truth to the rumor that you got the teeth uh, done to, for the gold anniversary of the uh, Olympia? No, I have this for a long time. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure you did. <laughs> well, your thoughts on competing uh, here at the Product Pro now? You've got pretty much almost the same lineup, minus Phil, uh, and just a, a handful of guys. So it's a, a pretty tough lineup here in Prague. Uh, your thoughts on your physique and how you're going to place? I don't have to please my guys, it's not in my hand, but uh, I just hope I do well, you know. Just do what I always do. <coughs> what I think you do. All right, thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Okay, we're going to get over the Ruling Wiggler. Really, it's been a uh, year of ups and downs, literally for you. You had a terrible accident earlier in the year, uh, which a lot of people thought was going to completely take you off, possibly out of bodybuilding. Uh, but not only did you get back and qualify, but obviously got back on the Olympia stage. So, um, you know, best of luck to you, obviously, your good fortune. Hope it continues. But um, you thought for a while that you might be done. Did the uh, accident uh, impact your preparations any for the Olympia? Um, yes, because uh, 
What are you looking now, really? Is it, is it, are you getting back there? Are you getting close to 100% now? I'm bad at that. All right, thank you, Roland. Another gentleman making his debut on the Olympia stage this year, Juan Morel, Big Diesel, rocking the Olympia stage. And uh, Juan, this was a big difference. I mean, you've been on the New York stage, and you know, you've been on some pretty good IFBB stages, but nothing quite uh, is like being on the Olympia stage in front of a sold out 10,000 plus arena. Uh, how was your experience? Hi everyone, I'm happy to be here and I'm looking forward to showing everybody a good show. Getting back to the question, um, being on the Olympic stage was an honor. I mean, I'm fortunate enough to be able to get on stage with guys not even too long ago, 2007, when I started bodybuilding, Dexter Victor, Kai Green, Phil Heath, these guys that I was looking at in the magazines and looked up to them. and fortunate enough to be able to stand on uh, in my first Olympic get a top 10 call out, which was my goal. Um, it's an unbelievable feeling, it's a dream come true. And I'm gonna keep on trying to fulfill my dreams and become, you know, get in that top five, top six in the world in the future. And, you know, for now, I'm just gonna keep competing and giving everybody a good show and, you know, happy to be here, thank you. And, how can I say, it's not, a, just really, really, really happy to be doing this. Juan, well, uh, this, this is also uncharted waters for you as well, with the travel, uh, especially overseas and prepping. Is, is it a lot different than getting ready at home? Uh, it's, it's different, yes. I mean, I'm the type of person that I make no excuses. I go to the gym, it doesn't matter where I'm at to be traveling. I find a way, Dexter will tell you, you know, we've been training two, three o'clock in the morning, doesn't matter, you know, um, what the situation is. is I make no excuses. I'm gonna get the job done, and you know I'll, I will try to bring my best at every show that I'm at, and you know give the fans something worth watching. All right, thank you, Juan. Johnny Jackson, world's strongest bodybuilder here in Prague. Johnny, you're another veteran, uh, better on that. You've been in uh, a lot more Olympias than, than people think. I think most people would guess you've been in four or five years. You've been closer to 10, is that correct? Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> that's a short answer. <laughs> Johnny, just a few years ago, uh, we happened to be talking about uh, bodybuilding versus powerlifting. You were juggling both. Uh, obviously, you earned the title of World's Strongest Bodybuilder, uh, but you felt that you had to kind of make a decision uh, between the two, is one doesn't really work with the other, does it? No, it really doesn't. Um, you have to focus on either one or the other. Um, and so, you know, this is the bread and butter of bodybuilding, so um, I haven't done powerlifting in a while, and just been focusing on this and being bodybuilding. Um, this is now powerlifting is obviously not. I mean, obviously they have all kinds of age divisions to deal with bodybuilding. Uh, is that something you want to go back to, Johnny? You know, when you uh, call it a day in your bodybuilding career, whenever that time should come, or are you pretty much just going to ride out the bodybuilding world? Yeah, probably. Um, th after the Nordic Pro uh, next week, I'm not going to compete um, in bodybuilding for a while. So probably, you know, I'll do a meet here and there, chill out a little bit, have some fun. But, uh, there's still some records I like to break and power that thing, so I still have some goals. Um, so we talked about that. You're, you're, are you basically going to a semi-retirement, Johnny? Is that what I'm hearing? Or what's going on? No, I'm just going to go to semi-rest. Semi-rest. <laughs> so you could probably use. You've been on the circuit for, for some time, obviously. So. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you, Johnny.